This is the view from halfway up the tour on the side of Chalice Well at dusk, which is always the most magical time in Avalon. Dusk is the liminal time, and it's a between place, sacred to Morgan the Fay, the goddess of Avalon. And all the Celtic Otherworld stories, everything about fairyland, Avalon, the Otherworld, is always easier connected through the half light of dusk. And we're looking west towards the ocean, or towards the Bristol Channel at least, which is as close as we get. It's over there, there's that little hill, and beyond there is the sea. It takes about an hour to get there from here, because the roads are quite windy. And here we are on Bushy Coombe which is a very beautiful place and there you see Windmill Hill that crown of trees at the top today there is a park there and there would have been an ancient stone circle there in times gone by this is one of the most beautiful peaceful places to come there's a pussycat stalking over there and there's Glastonbury Tor peeking out the next hill along <sighs> Glastonbury Tor is the sacred mountain here on Avalon, and one of the reasons why this place is so sacred. Like many other places with sacred mountains, the Himalayas with Mount Kailash, and where people have built sacred mountains in order to get closer to their gods in, um, in Mexico and in Egypt, of course, with the pyramids, sacred mountains. And the many temples of Hindu and um, India and Bali, where they're all very tall, reaching towards the sky, like Mount Kailash. This is our sacred mountain here in Avalon. Across there is Chalice Hill, which is the heart of this land. Lots of brambles, we have lots of brambles here. And if we look at the earth, there are many dandelions and yarrow, lots of yarrow at this time of the year and all this land about us would have thousands of years ago been underwater. Avalon would have been connected to the mainland by only a narrow strip to the, I think to the east called Fontes Ball and it's just a causeway of land that would have flooded at some times but there was a ditch or a dike built across it so that it was inaccessible or not easily accessible by the mainland to keep this island a sanctuary. For many, many years this place was a sanctuary, an Isle of the Dead, respected and loved by the people who lived near here. Oh, that was some kind of weird firework. Glastonbury Town is always crazy, there's always stuff going on. My dogs are not like that, do they? Glastonbury at dusk. This tree right behind me here, see if I can give you a good look. For me this is one of the most sacred trees in Glastonbury. We have our old oaks here in Glastonbury, we have Gog and Magog, which, um, more fireworks, which are, um, they're across that way, a good 10-20 minutes walk away. And they are ancient trees indeed, but they are very scarred. I think they were hit by lightning and there's not much of them left these days. But this tree is a linden blossom tree, which is my favourite kind of tree. Let's go have a look. <laughs> it's down the edge of this hill. And a linden blossom tree is also called a lime tree in England. And these trees are sacred to the Great Mother. They were the centre of town for many years. Woo! big fireworks for the centre of town for many years in ancient cultures, in Europe, in medieval cultures, people get married under these trees. And the linden blossom, the blossoms of these trees are very healing, they're calming and um, protecting and they have this sweet scent in the summer. We've just passed blossom season but this tree is absolutely massive, it is very ancient and it, for me it is the mother tree. This is the part of Glastonbury you come to to connect with the mother of this land and the deva of this landscape here. Um, I can't really show you because it's a bit dark, but it's sprawling and wide and there are deep roots that branch out. And if you ever come to Glastonbury, if you come up to Bushy Coombe, just past your kind of ashram, and come visit this tree and leave an offering, 
because it is deeply the mother spirit of this land, this beautiful tree. She comes off the edge. So we go into the valley. Can we see? Not really. She's beautiful anyway. Hey sisters. I'm here on the tour. You can see, there he is. Um, over there, see if I can show you better. See that little clump of, um, oh, how do I get in? That clump of green. That is a hawthorn tree, sacred to Rihanna, and goddess of love here in the landscape. But I'm not here about Rihanna, and I'm here about Morgan Le Fay. So on the south side of the tour, there are these huge copper beech trees. They are absolutely massive. And in the summer and in the springtime, they glow black. There are all these green trees and then these huge copper beeches. Uh, myself and uh, Morgan's sister, Hannah, came here in June at the Enchantress Retreat and we saw these giant trees and we had to come and see them because it just felt like a portal to the underworld. So we came along and down under there, in the darkness, are many badger holes and lots of earth and loads of holes for earth dwelling creatures. And these trees are black, they're unbelievably beautiful. And underneath there is an altar that seems to always be there. An altar to the trees. And this is where I come to connect with Morgan of the Underworld. And I feel her very, very strongly here. This is a very powerful place for Morgan in this landscape here in Glastonbury. Of course, up there on the tour is her other power spot. Morgan Le Fay is all about. Um, how can I get it in if I did this? Morgan Le Fay, the very top of the tour, is a very powerful spot for her. That's where her energy, her, that transformation and magic and visibility just comes through strong. Up there is where she makes you step into her power. Down here is where she makes you step into the underworld. So you should totally join Morgan Le Fay Mystery School and come to all these places with me. So today we're here at the Sweet Track and this is the Shapwick Heath Nature Reserve on the Avalon Marshes. And thousands of years ago out in the Glastonbury levels, the Somerset levels, people lived on the little marsh villages and they were like little villages on the raised parts of the land and on little stilts and this pathway right here where we're walking see through this this bit here is where the original trackways that they made through the marshes so they could walk through the marshes were built over 5,800 years ago and this is a super super magical part of um, Glastonbury it's not in Glastonbury look at these ferns so amazing and this is a really, really special, magical, ancient place. And if you believe in fairies and divas and nature spirits, this is where they are. behind me, where well, that's my mum, um, is a replica of the old Neolithic sweet track. So this is what the path would have looked like thousands of years ago. And that's how people would have got through the marshes to the island of Glastonbury, the island of Avalon. And it's a bit wobbly, but I think we're allowed on it. So we're going to walk.
and that is Chalice Hill, the round hill there. And in Avalonian mythology, we hear the tradition of Waikati Jones. The body of the goddess is in the landscape. The hill over here, you see that little ridge of a hill? That's her knee sticking out. She's lying on the hill, um, kind of one, one arm behind her head, kind of reclining. This is her pregnant belly, the Chalice Hill, and this big old tour, it's her big old breast, and that's her nipple going into the sky. On the way to the tour, we have a secret little chapel that's very beautiful. This is called St Margaret's Chapel and the Magdalene Almhouses. I'm going to call it the Magdalene Chapel because why not? It's a beautiful chapel in Melbourne. Feel this is a very sacred place to Mary Magdalene. For me, um, I'm talking very quietly. For me, Glastonbury is always really bound up with the pagan stuff and Morgan Le Fay and the goddesses, but also there's that history of the truth bedded deep within other world religions within Christianity and the stories of Mary Magdalene and. Um, Jesus Christ and Joseph of Arimathea coming here to learn at this mystery school or create a church and this seeding of the Christian faith here and the beauty and the sacred marriage of that Christian faith. So Glastonbury is always a mix of two.